That's their dog, how many people there. You can't believe the sort of underhandedness and subterfuge that went into sorting that one out. A little gift here for Maureen as well. Just open that up, see if it, so to your approval. Uh, and we couldn't think of anything today. We know he's a piss head, so we got a bottle of singing. So, and uh, there's, uh, there was loads of money collected. We, we were absolutely gobsmacked and overwhelmed. Uh, and uh, I, I must... I must thank Rachel and some of her mates because this was impossible for, for us to, to get a collection together living in Blackpool. So where's Rachel Dyson? Where? So I've got to thank Rachel and some of her friends for actually getting this collection going uh, and, and sorting some of the prizes out as well and helping us to keep it all hush hush. And uh, there's a voucher there as well. Where there was loads of money left over so we said to Neil, could you please convert that into uh, accommodation here at, at the hotel and he's very kindly so uh i think all in all that's uh, that's yeah. not a bad thing yeah. so thank you very much yeah. you to to thank you do you want to do your speech <laughs> <laughs> or do you want to leave that? <laughs> I was going to say tomorrow, uh, Dave's a man of few words, and we all have said that if our daughter ever got round to getting married, uh, it would have to be the bride's mother who made the speech. <laughs> So I just had a few things to say, really. Firstly, I think we should all pay tribute to Mick Mead. Yeah. Yeah. But he's not having my present. <laughs> Mick started the festival way back. Um, with tremendous support from Ali, who was the who was his wife, and also from little Jim and John, who sadly are no longer with us, but they all worked so hard to get this festival going. And it was very successful for about 10 years, and then Mick moved out of the valley and the whole thing stopped. Um, and then I think it what day, when was it? Back in 2007. We, yeah, we met up with Mick in Ambleside. We were up there for Christmas. And he was talking about getting something going again in, in Ambleside. So we sort of helped him by. Mick is, is very good at, at sorting out the music, but he's bloody awful at organising anything. <laughs> <laughs> and the first, the first one we had in Ambleside, it got to the afternoon of the first day and people kept coming up and saying, when am I playing, when am I playing? And Mick said, oh, it's a festival. <laughs> they don't need to know. <laughs> and I had to actually pin him to the wall and get him to give me a, a running order. So the next one, we took our computer up there and our printer. But somehow Ambleside really wasn't the place. And the three of us decided it would be far better to bring the festival home. And luckily, Neil agreed. Um, and really, you know, the rest is history. I think the festival has gone from strength to strength. At first, Mick ran the music and we did the admin, but gradually Dave got more and more involved. And then about five years ago, when Mick, for health reasons, pulled out, um, you know, we just, we took it over and, well, it's been a huge part of our lives for the past 10 years and we're really going to miss it. We've made some, such great friends. Um, big thanks, obviously, to Neil and Jane. Only um, supported us. They've made a big contribution to the charities, 
and Nick and Mi uh, I can't get the words out now. Well to come. But Neil also makes wonderful fudge, which is, <laughs> <laughs> which is for sale on festival desk. <laughs> um, big thank you to all of the musicians, sound crew, festival crew. I'm not going to attempt to name everybody because I'll only get in trouble for missing someone out. But I do think there are a few people who deserve a special mention. And they are musicians and sound people who have been with the festival right from the start and have hardly missed one.